Joe Kazooie tracks. Did you? <laughs> they're so good. Yeah, I didn't get to uh, listen I've, to I've them. Got, I've got some thoughts on them, but they're good thoughts. Yeah, I figured you would like that story. Is that one? Is that where you would be the one to do it? No. Um, uh, let's switch the third and fourth story. I'll do the fourth story. You do the third. Uh, the third one, the banjo kazooie. Is that okay, I actually meant just, that one for you? I'll just swap them on my tabs. Yeah. All right. Got got my tabs open. I've got the chat open. All right. That is tweeted out and retweeted. I will uh, retweet it as well. Stream looks good. I lost a subscriber. No. To hell with them. <laughs> uh, let's see. I just had me a sandwich a little while ago. So if I burp really loud on the stream, excuse me. What kind of sandwich did you have? Turkey. Oh, nice. Turkey and Munster had... cheese. I had a uh, breakfast quesadilla a couple mm. of hours ago with uh, cheese, eggs, and bacon. Dude, I had a quesadilla the other day at lunch from Woody's right down the road. It was full of uh, jalapenos and cheese. About two hours later, I was regretting it. <laughs> but in the short term. In the short term, it was worth it. But man, about two hours later, I was like, why do I do these things? That's how I feel now about a lot of stuff that I eat. I'm turning into my dad where, like, everything hurts my stomach. Yeah. <laughs> Same here. What's up, uh, you guys? Rampage and uh, and Dymo. Early risers today. I like early it. Early risers. All right. Tyler, do I pronounce uh, that right? Dymo? Is that how you pronounce his, your name? Dymo? Dymo? I have no idea. <laughs> Bold of you to assume I slept. <laughs> <laughs> hey, last night was the best night's sleep I've had in four years, honestly. Really? Dima-O. Okay, Dima-O. Dima-O. Dima-O 22? Dima-O 22 and Rampage! <laughs> Love it. All right, oh, well, we got four viewers now. All right, it's going up. Yeah. So let's... Uh... Japanese for Great Demon King. That's ah, pretty cool. That's cool. I like that. Yeah. If um if you guys want just as uh and I'll as more people file in, I'll remind everyone. I made a post on Facebook about the uh because right after we do this show, we're recording the Ninja Turtles roundtable. Uh -huh. If you guys have any um questions or comments that you want read on the show, just throw them on the post and I'll uh, make sure to have it up. And uh, I'm gonna do the Wallachia giveaway the steam code giveaway after the review. So uh, it's a pretty easy Castlevania question. So uh, everybody that's in the chat room right now, first one to answer the question gets the, uh, gets the code. Unless I answer it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm pretty sure it's a steam code. They didn't, uh, they didn't specify, but this does not look like a uh, Nintendo switch code. So, I would guess it's a Steam code. From the looks of it, like, I, I didn't recognize the... Yeah, I'm looking at the format. It's got to be Steam. Yeah, it's got to be Steam. I had to guess. Yeah. It's a good game, though. I'm ready to review it. Um, I watched a little bit of gameplay earlier. It looks fun. Mm -hmm. And the controls are really tight on it. That's what I like about it. That was going to be one of my biggest questions, mm -hmm. is how, how the game controlled. All right, well, I got all the tabs open. I'm good to go. So whenever you're ready. Yep. I mean, yeah, I think I retweeted the, yeah. Let me get a little more swig of okay. coffee. Yep, I retweeted your post, so I'm all set. I got all, all right. my tabs. Here we go in three, two, one. Do you like this show and you want to help support us? Do you want us to stay ad-free? Do you want extra episodes every month? Of course you do. Then head over to patreon.com slash nerdcaveretro. Become a Patreon supporter of this very show.
Greetings, programs, and welcome to the Nerd Cave Retro Show. My name is Jason Robbins. And my name is Derek Diamond. Ah, we made it past Halloween, and now we are officially in turkey territory. So how does it feel to know that the, uh, the, the year is going by super quick? Something else crazy is going to happen. Yeah. It is 2020 after <laughs> all. It's weird because this, this feels like the longest year ever, but then again, like it feels like it was just March. That's the thing that, you know, I've noticed as I've gotten older is that time just seems to go by so much more quickly. I feel like just yesterday we were at Pensacon. I know. <laughs> and we were we were watching uh, COVID over the horizon and we were kind of like, what's going to happen? <laughs> I remember right after the convention, because that, that was when COVID was starting to uh -huh. become more of a news story. I had gotten sick, and I was like, oh, my God, do I have it? <laughs> but thankfully, it was just a, a sinus infection like yeah. I normally get after a convention. So like me, every good. every time I get this, usually this is the time of the year when my sinuses start going crazy. Every morning I wake up, my head's stuffy, and I'm like, do I have it? Do I have the vid? <laughs> <laughs> No, but yeah, it, in a way, it has gone by really quickly. I mean, people have been saying that it's been the longest year ever, and I think just with the sheer amount of stuff that's happened throughout the year to make things, you know, unusual, uh -huh. it it's long in that sense. But time wise, it's still gone by pretty quickly. Like it's still nuts to think that we're in November. Yeah, I and know. you know, we're we're about to head into twenty twenty one. So. We'll uh we'll see what happens in the season finale <laughs> yeah. of 2020. So what's your plans for I, Thanksgiving? Any uh, gaming plans? I uh, you know you're gonna probably visit the family. Yeah, I'll be visiting the family. Um, I was actually gonna mention this um, at the end of the show, but I I'll go ahead and mention it here. Since you know, because I'll, I'll be out of town next week, and then I know right after that is Thanksgiving. Uh, there's an RPG that I've been wanting to play for quite some time for the Super Nintendo called Soul Blazer. Oh yeah, I'm gonna yeah. spend a couple of weeks playing that, and that will be uh, my next review for the show. Because with these RPGs, you know, I, I like to have more time to really dive into it. Because it's not like a game that you can just play for five minutes and get a full impression of. Yeah, uh, my plans are still to uh, to get Link's Awakening for the Christmas holidays. But my, you know, I talked to my parents the other day, and they're gonna go out of town to my brother's. To, uh, for Thanksgiving, they want me to go, but I, I don't know if I want to make that trip twice in a month to go for mm -hmm. Thanksgiving and, and Christmas. So I think I might save that trip for Christmas, and um, I might get me one of those t uh, turkeys from Popeyes. <laughs> they're, they're advertising uh, uh, t turkeys now at Popeyes, like a whole Thanksgiving dinner, and I'm like, hmm, that sounds this, lovely. This guy I used to work with, uh, he lives in Tampa now, but he used to uh, fry turkeys. Like, you'd pay him, like, a flat fee, and yeah. he would fry a turkey for you. So freaking good. I love fried I turkey. Thanksgiving, like, three years ago. One of the best turkeys I've ever had. But, yeah, fried turkey is amazing. That's the way to go. Just don't blow up your house trying to do it. <laughs> I was reading about uh, flash frying turkeys. Like, you can flash fry a whole turkey in, like, half an hour. Really? Hmm. It's that whole flash frying stuff is really fascinating to me. And Rampage says I'm still waiting for more gaming streams from me. <laughs> I well with with the holidays coming up because I'm going to be trying to batch record a lot of episodes for my show, which is what I've been doing really over the last few days. Uh, that would free up more time to do some some streaming because I really want to stream Earthbound. Yeah. Or um, Donkey Kong Country. Uh, the. Thanksgiving holiday might be a good time for us to go ahead and do the uh, the Mask of the Phantasm, too. So we should probably yeah. get with Mr. Phelps and uh, get that scheduled. I have been waiting for months to do that <laughs> commentary. Track. Like, that movie's so good. Yeah, it is. I can't wait. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's gonna there, be a there's lot. a lot of exciting stuff coming up. It's going to be a lot better than uh, Pac-Man and his ghostly adventures. Just, just about that much. Just, just a little bit. About that much better. Uh, so anything else you want to talk about before we go into the news for this week? Uh, no, I don't think so. It, it's been, um, I, I do want to say thanks again to everyone for uh, tuning in to the 200th episode. That was mm -hmm. one of the most fun episodes of the show that I personally have had doing. That was a long and show, too. It was, <laughs> but like it's, it's cool to have 
you know, people show up every week to watch us you know, ramble, banter, and talk yeah. about games. And then the, the Discord chat, too, which I know we talked about last week, too. But oh, yeah. just thanks again to everybody for the continued support. Yeah, it's up now. So if you missed it, go back on the feed. We just did 200 last week. Go catch it. Yep. Uh, but right now, let's go into the news, shall we? Yes. Uh, this isn't really much of a news story. It's more of a kind of an opinion piece uh, for us to talk about. This came from I Am The Rampage in our uh, our email. Um, there is a new um, payment option at uh, GameStop where... Um, there's a couple of different payment options they're coming up with. There's uh, buy now, pay later, get your item today and pay it off over six weeks with biweekly payments using Quad Pay or Klarna. Rent to own, take home your product, then make recurring payments to go toward ownership using progressive leasing. No fee layaway, reserve an item while you're paying it off, layaway, then play away. Uh, the GameStop Power Up Rewards credit card. Uh, card designed for gamers with exclusive rewards and no annual fee. Uh, GameStop gift cards, of course, and trade credit. So what do you think about um, GameStop using uh, their pretty much their own credit service now? Um, I mean, I, honestly, I, I don't see any real problem with it. It can only help, but at the same time, I kind of feel GameStop is still kind of grasping at straws at this point. You hit the nail on the head. I don't think it's a bad idea, and I think it's worth trying because worst-case scenario, it doesn't work, and you just don't do it. Mm. But at the same time, like I, I know that you've talked more positively about GameStop in more recent shows that we've done, but I, I feel like GameStop, in a way, has become kind of irrelevant mm -hmm. over the last... I couldn't tell you the last time I even set foot in a GameStop. Yeah. And there used to be, like, four close by me, and now I think it's down to two. I think there's the one still in the mall. Then there's one that's um, in a plaza not too far from my house. But, um, yeah, I I don't think it's a terrible idea, and I don't think it hurts them to try, but I don't know if it will help. Honestly, I, I kind of prefer GameStop the way it used to be back in the day when you could go in there and find stuff for older systems. I think that's the world we're moving to now. There's more interest in older systems. And I'm not just even talking about like Nintendo and Super Nintendo. I mean, I, I think they should offer things, you know, like original Xboxes and PS1 and PS2. Pretty much every console from, the, uh, you know, from the Nintendo forward, they should have in-store stuff. Like, I, and I, I think that would help the actual brick and mortar stores to become more universal when it, as far as uh, gaming goes i just feel like with newer stuff especially with the way you know the the new xbox is with it, it doesn't like the 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 affordable xbox the series x doesn't even have an optical disc drive on it it's all download and that's that's the direction we're going so if gamestop wants to be relevant they need to be more of a a gaming all around gaming store from you know older systems to now and i think that would help but i i don't know i'm it's it's above my pay grade to figure these things out yeah because i look at you know the retro gaming stores that we have here in town they still through covid have still done decent business mm -hmm. because like you said people crave those older games like Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and even more recent as far as the Xbox or the original PlayStation. If GameStop even had a smaller section of their store yeah. that was dedicated to that, I think that would be a much more appealing thing to get people to come back. Yeah, exactly. And offer, tra you know, trade-in value for older stuff. Like, you know, I, if... I don't. I usually trade in my doubles of Nintendo stuff to the local retro game store just for store credit, and you know that's kind of quite a drive for me. You know, that's a thirty-minute drive to get to that store, but I have a GameStop that's, you know, two minutes down the road. If I could just go there and turn in my, you know, my old stuff and get decent store credit, I would be more willing to do that. Yeah, I, that, I would agree with that. 
not turn in, you know, eight hundred dollars worth of games and get eighty cents in in yes. store credit. <laughs> Well, and that, I think, too, has really soured people on GameStop because it's a universal known thing that you trade in a console and you get if you get, you know, an eighth of what you paid for it, Mm -hmm. you're really lucky. Yeah, exactly. And It's almost become a running gag at this point. So I I think I think they also need to maybe look at their current business model and just figure out a way to, to update it. I just don't if, know. If, and in the retro gaming, I think it will help. Yeah, but I, I you know, you th- you kind of hit the nail on the head too. I think maybe GameStop has soured people's opinion of GameStop with their practices that they've done over the past, you know, 10, 15 years. Especially for me. I mean, it was years before I went back into that store because I, you know, I don't want to go into a store to, to just browse and get accosted the second I walk in the doors. Like, can I help you find something? What are you looking for? You want to you wanna put $5 down on FIFA? You know, and I'm like, no, I just want to look around. Please, I haven't even gotten halfway in the store yet. Leave me alone. Like, I don't want to deal with that. Just let me look, people. And they don't really do that anymore. But that's still that you have that. Like, when I still think of that when I pull up to GameStop. And I'm like, is this going to be the time when I walk in the door and they're like, hey, can we get you something? And you, you want to put $5 down on something? I'm like, no, just stop it. It's like an excited puppy that's happy to see you when yeah. you get back home. Like, no, if I want to put $5 down on something, I'll put $5 down on something. Leave me alone. Like, if I need help, I will ask for it. <laughs> exactly. Let's see our next story. I've been excited to talk about this since I saw it on the uh, mm-hmm. on the, uh, the news feed <laughs> from NintendoLife.com. Spiritual successor to underrated and misunderstood Zelda Two could be Switch bound. That, that's a certain way of describing it. Yeah. Uh, Zelda Two: Adventures of Link gets a bad rap with fans of the series largely because it deviates quite dramatically from the core gameplay template laid out by its beloved forerunner, The Legend of Zelda. Normal service would be resumed for A Link to the Past, but there are many people who still have a soft spot for the second NES outing, despite its shortcomings. Indie studio Zero Infinite Games is creating a spiritual successor to the title, which will hopefully service the needs of those very same people. Into the Eternal takes place in the kingdom of Felsend and places you in the role of Kaven, who looks a bit like Link from Zelda 2. I did notice that. Hmm. The game is on Kickstarter, Kickstarter now with a very modest goal of five grand. That's actually pretty low. I thought it would have been a little yeah, bit more than that. Not bad. Uh, this is actually into the eternal second pop at crowdfunding success. Back in August, it failed to reach its initial target of ten grand. The aim, the aim is to release the title on Steam early access initially, then port it to current and next gen consoles afterwards, and that includes the Nintendo Switch. So, I, I don't have an issue with someone taking that core concept because i i think the actual gameplay of zelda it, it, i kind of use the season of the witch mentality that you know joey image talked about on yeah. the show a couple of weeks ago if you were to make that a completely separate game and it not have the zelda title attached to it i think it would have been much better received if it were just some type of medieval side scroller yeah just some random had a adventure different game <laughs> Yeah, I think it would have been like, it's not a bad game. But uh, as far as someone taking that concept, I, I don't have an issue with it. Like, I, I don't, I didn't hate the game for the gameplay. I hated it because it wasn't Zelda. Yeah. If that makes sense. Mixmaster but says it's better to... than the first. Oh, sir. <laughs> Derek's gone. See what you did, Mixmaster? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually a little shocked by that statement. Mm, mm. I don't really know what to say to that. No. But but um if someone wants to take that concept and turn it into a new game, I don't have a problem with that. I mean the screenshots look pretty nice. I would actually play this. It's got that cool kind of not necessarily uh Breath of the Wild look, but it's kind of got that weird cell shaded look to it that I really like. And it's got kind of a cartoonish vibe to it. And I kind of dig that. 
The dragon looks really cool too. Yeah. I also love that they threw in the the fishing aspect too. Yeah. I kind of dig this. If this comes out, I'll give it a chance. Yeah, I would too. Because like I said, I Zelda 2 as a game, like it's gameplay, I don't have a problem with. Like I thought if you took the Zelda name out of it, it would have been much better received. But yeah, quite the season of the witch mentality. And $5,000 is not that, that much to ask for. I, I wonder if they've reached it yet. I haven't checked the, the Kickstarter page. Uh, let's see if this goes to If it's it. even still going, let's see. Da, da, da. Oh, it passed it. Oh, really? Nice. Made it to $6,756 with yeah, 17 still, days to go. Yeah, still 17 days to go. So if you're interested, definitely uh, go throw a couple of bucks. What are their tiers? They have uh, The lowest one is a $10 tier. Um, no reward. Um, let's see, $5 or more as a contributor. Uh, you get your name appears in the credits. Uh, Twenty five or more, you get a digital copy of the game plus early access. Uh, Fifty dollars or more, you get a collector's edition, and one hundred or more, you get a producer credit. Three hundred or more, virtual publisher, and that's the highest tier they have. Some bad rewards. It's not bad. Yeah. You know, right. I, I will say this. If if this is made, I will give it a shot. Yeah, me too. Oh, I mean, it's going to get made. It met its, its its goal, so we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, once it comes out, I mean, we'll hopefully this subject will come up again, you know, as the making of it progresses and we yeah. find out when it's going to come out. Uh, this, um, this also is from I Am The Rampage in our email. Uh, which you can email us stories if you'd like to talk about it on the show at uh, nerdcaveretro at gmail.com. This is from siliconera.com. Japanese entertainment corporation Jenda to acquire a majority of Sega Entertainment shares. Um, let's see, Jenda, which is an acronym for Global Entertainment Network for Dreams and Aspirations. Wow. Uh, announced their shares acquisition, acquisition at the recent board of directors meeting. Jenda will hold 85.1% of Sega Entertainment shares as of December 3rd, 2020, once the transfer goes into effect. Uh, its primary focus is on developing an amusement machine rental business, online crane machines, promotional sales, and business between the Chinese and United States markets. Um, and it indicates that Jenda and Sega will be working to revitalize the amusement industry and create an environment where everyone can be involved, including manufacturers, operators, and users. Um, it sounds like this is more, um, more geared towards their, um, you know, uh, arcade machines and things like that. This doesn't have very much to do with the home market, um, but I want. I'm just kind of interested if it's going to maybe once they get all that stuff in place, if they're going to start maybe um, focusing a little more on the home, uh, you know, the home stuff too. Like maybe yeah, that's making what I was more thinking games. Too. I don't know. Yeah, that was my initial thought whenever I read the story is how will this eventually affect the, the like you said, the home market Yeah, of, of that side of Sega? Because I, I feel like, we haven't really heard anything from Sega in a while. Well, like they, remember at the earlier this year, they said we were going to get Sonic news every month in 2020, and we haven't heard anything since then. <laughs> which like, would uh, make more sense for it for them to do that next year because it's the 30-year anniversary. Yeah, exactly. I wonder if, if they meant, maybe, maybe we just re misread it. Maybe they said starting in January. 2021 i don't know because it is the 35th anniversary of uh sonic next year right the crazy thing is is that they have not announced a new sonic game yet for Weird. 2021 like i have no doubt there will be one yeah and what i would like for them to do is there was a game that came out in 2011 i believe called sonic generations mm -hmm. that where you could play as you would go through um old zones from the sonic games like you had the genesis era the dreamcast era and the modern era you had the two and a half d aspect where you played as classic sonic then you had the the hybrid of the two 
with modern Sonic. I would love to see a sequel to that game where they remake some of the old levels mm -hmm. as like a 30th anniversary tribute. I'm is what I would personally like to see. I just thought of something. What if when uh, Mario 35, when they pull that off of the Switch store, they put up Sonic uh, Battle Royale? Oh my God. That would work for a Battle Royale type of game. Can you imagine the intensity if you get into the top five? <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't have the Twitch skills available for that, but that would definitely be fun to play. The concept of that is going to give me nightmares. <laughs> I, dude, I bet you 20 bucks they're going to do a, a Sonic Battle Royale type of game. It would make sense to do it. It would be a great format for it, and it's all the rage right now. They do it with Tetris. They're doing it with Mario. Why not do it with Sonic? Yeah, I would. I, I would definitely play that. Oh, for sure. For sure. Uh, good stuff going on in the chat right now. By yeah, the way, yeah, I, I see that they're they're discussing uh, a top ten um, Zelda list right now. I'd totally be down for doing a top ten Zelda list. They're time. not even listening to us. They're just still talking about Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not a terrible discussion to have. Yeah. We'll do that on a later show. We'll do that maybe yeah. maybe d during the holidays or something. We'll do uh, our top five favorite um, Zelda Zelda games. I can tell you what game will not be on mine. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> but our last story, and this made me really happy when I read this. This comes to us from NintendoLife.com. Banjo-Kazooie composer posts remixes for Halloween with a full album coming. There are myriad spooky levels throughout the history of video games, and although one of the best has to be Mad Monster Mansion from Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, it says here is a disclaimer, officially known as the best video game of all time around hmm. these parts, <laughs> when the writer's around at least. <laughs> Composer Grant Kirkhope recently put out a remix of that level's creepy theme, as well as a witchy remix for the villainous Gruntilda. On top of those seasonal gifts, Kirkhope has also confirmed that he's working on an entire album of remixes from the game. Now that's just the kind of wholesome, heartwarming news we need to get us through the end of this wretched year. <laughs> and uh, Grant uh, Kirk posted on his Twitter the uh, links to his Bandcamp page, which has the remix to Mad Monster Mansion as well as the Gruntilda theme, which I listened to both right before we started the show, and both are fantastic. That's so the cool. Gruntilda one, the Gruntilda one is really good. The Mad Monster Mansion one has kind of a slow build, and all of a sudden you hear this choir, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, it actually <laughs> scared me. And then it gets into the actual song. But they're they're both really, really good. Uh, definitely go to at Grant Kirkhope on Twitter and check both those out if you're a Banjo-Kazooie fan. Because I've praised that game immensely on the show. It, to me, it is probably at least in my opinion the best platformer on the n64 i actually think it's better than mario 64 yeah i saw this uh From the, i saw this post last night and i put it in the in the thing here in the, in our um, google doc and i was like i i can't wait for for derek to see this he's gonna flip <laughs> I, yeah I was, I was i was going through the articles this morning and i was like what <laughs> i was gonna text you about it about it but i was like nope i'm just gonna let him find it and then hear the what <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. like christmas morning i I need to play banjo kazooie i need to get a copy of it for the 64 i wish i wish they would put it on the switch this seems like a no-brainer to put this on the nintendo switch like i don't know why they can't come to an agreement with rare <laughs> i would hope so because I guarantee you, if they were to do not just a port, but if they did a straight-up remaster for Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, mm -hmm. that might be a little greedy on my part, but at least Banjo-Kazooie, it would sell so well. Yeah, well, I mean, with Nintendo and Microsoft now, you know, playing nice with each other, it's kind of like, you know, Microsoft owns Rare, so why not? That's leaving money on the table for both companies by not doing that. Well, there was a whole generation of gamers that grew up with the Nintendo Rare marriage. Yeah. Because could you imagine if they were to port, like, Banjo-Kazooie, even, like, Jet Force Gemini, mm -hmm. Conker's Bad Fur Day, 
so many of those great like Donkey Kong 64 too cuz that that yeah. game gets hate but I but I personally really enjoyed it but you have so many notable games that were created by that the marriage of those two companies. Well, yeah, I mean you got rare games going all the way back to the Nintendo, the NES. Mm -hmm. So yep. to have those be on the Switch is just man, you guys are just leaving money on on the table. And now that now that you guys are kind of getting along cuz here's the thing you know, you got, I don't even think play, Sony and Microsoft are competing anymore. I think there's enough gamers to go around that, you know, Microsoft's doing their thing. Um, Sony's doing their thing now. Nintendo's always done their thing. They don't care what anybody else is doing. So they're not competing with one another, especially Microsoft and, and Nintendo. They're not competing for business. So why not, you know, kind of combine and, you know, do remasters of Banjo-Kazooie? Why not make a new Banjo-Kazooie game? All that old, all those old IPs, people are hungry for, you know, some new, new games in those franchises. I know it's a little bit of a different scenario, but look at what happened with Crash Bandicoot. Mm -hmm. They did the remastered trilogy. It sold really well, and now there's a new game out. Exactly. I, I think if you were to remaster Banjo-Kazooie and release it, I guarantee you it would sell well enough for them to make a true oh, yeah. Banjo-Kazooie 3. And it's not like it takes a huge team to make that game. You know, 10 people could, could pop that game out in a year. <laughs> it's not that hard. I still need to play the ukulele game. That was I forgot the actual yeah. name of the company, but a lot of people who worked on Banjo Kazooie made this game. It's like a spiritual successor to Banjo Kazooie. I yeah. still really need to play it. But um, yeah, Mixmaster said in the chat, "Yeah, we came here for Zelda and Sonic talk." Yeah, <laughs> as I, I mean, usual. <laughs> those are two two topics I can talk about all day. Same here. If someone said Banjo Kazooie was their favorite game of all time, I would salute and clap. It's that good. It, it's in my top 10 for sure. Like top 10 all-time favorite video games, it's absolutely on there. But I could see, you know, but, from what I've seen of it, I could see, you know, from what people talk about it, I can understand why it would be somebody's favorite game. Because it, to me, it's a perfect platformer. Yeah. So it, I, it seems you, you got to be, check it out. Seems to be one of the few Nintendo 64 platform games that actually did well with that controller. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like uh, Mario 64, it's, it's kind of hard to do with that controller, but if you actually got it right, people love those games. Yeah. But let's go ahead yeah, and move I, into, I, I hope... oh, go ahead. I'm I was sorry. just going to say real quick, hopefully, hopefully something of note will, will come of it. E even if it's just a remixed album, yeah. because I, I, I'm definitely going to get. That's awesome. <laughs> I, can, I need to go listen to it. I didn't get a chance to listen to them. But let's go ahead and move into this month in video game history. In November of 1982, Konami releases Time Pilot. Let's see what this is all about. It is a multi-directional shooter designed by Yoshiki Okamoto and released in arcades. Um, it is a I love that post. Yeah, that poster looks cool. I don't see any screenshots of it though, and I don't remember this game. The the font that they used for the the years just it screams seventies. Yeah, like that's seventies psychedelic. That is a straight up seventies font right there. Yeah, I love it. Looks pretty. I, cool, I thought though. this was a cool little note. On November or in November of 1982, Atari <clears throat> renames the Atari Video Computer System to the Atari 2600. And I say that because I had no idea that it was named something other than the Atari 2600. Yeah, uh, they called it the AVC before that. Uh, of course, the Atari 2600. Then they went to the 5200. Then the 7800. But those failed miserably. I wonder why they changed the name, um, or why it wasn't twenty six hundred initially. I'm not sure. Maybe the, what year was this? Eighty two. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think the fifty two hundred was out by then. I don't think the fifty two hundred came out till like eighty five. I think. I don't know. I that's. Thought, that's I weird. thought it was just kind of cool that. It was named something else. Yeah. Like, it's a little factoid that I would have never known. I don't know. We'll have to research that. 
because that now you yeah. got me thinking why would they ch- call it the 2600 at that point yeah uh, in November 22nd of 1983, Sega releases Astron Belt in the United States. I remember us talking about this last year. This game actually looks really cool. Uh, the screenshots yeah, that are in the poster here. That looks awesome. If that's actual gameplay, I would love to play this game. This was way ahead of its time. It's a Laserdisc game, too. Oh, that's why. Which I thought was interesting. That's awesome. It's a Laserdisc play. video game in the form of a third-person space combat rail shooter released in arcades in 83 by Sega in Japan and licensed to Bally Midway for release in the U.S. Hmm. I like it. It's commonly cited as the first Laserdisc game. Oh, yeah, that's why I remember talking about that. Because uh, right after that was um, Dragon's Lair. Yep. They're putting out a mini Dragon's Lair arcade cabinet um, here pretty soon. Really? Yeah, and it's actually got uh, the disc in it uh, or something like that. I have to look that up. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Jumping ahead to 1993, on November 5th, Capcom releases Mega Man 6 for the NES in Japan. Yeah, one of the few Mega Mans I have yet to play. Really? Yeah, this was late in in the... This was around the time I wasn't playing consoles anymore and i had already left the nes in the dust by this time i had gone to the super nintendo from about 91 to 93 and then i discovered computer gaming the crazy thing is so get this it was released in november of 93 for the nes in japan march of 94 in north america Mm -hmm. the Super Nintendo had already been out almost three years Yeah, up to that point. Well, they were doing the Mega Man X series, too, on the Super Nintendo by this time. Yep. Crazy. It's just still still nuts that they were making NES games years after the Super oh, yeah. Nintendo. Up until 94. I think uh, Star Tropics... Wario's Woods was the last one. Yeah, I think Star Tropics 2 was one of the last uh, games released, too, for the NES. Mm-hmm. Um, on November 27th of 93, Quintet releases Illusion of Gaia... For the SNES in Japan, one of your favorites, I believe. One of the best and most underrated RPGs for the Super Nintendo. This would be another one that I would actually stream. Yeah. Because I, I feel like it's a game that still not a lot of people really know about. And I don't even remember how I was introduced to this game. I just remember, I want to say I read about it in Nintendo Power and I thought it looked cool. So yeah, I wound up getting it, uh, I think, for Christmas. And uh, because it came out in North America in '94, I had this issue. I got it for Christmas. I had this issue of Nintendo Power too, and yeah, because it was on the cover, I think. Yeah, or it might have been the Secret of Mana issue. I might be thinking about. I'm not. I don't know. I don't remember. I wish I still had my Nintendo Powers. Damn it! Stupid Hurricane Katrina. I know. I miss that magazine so much. <laughs> ah, me too. I I miss when that that person who uh, scanned all the pages and put up that website, and then ten, Nintendo came along and was like, "No," and I'm like, "Why don't y'all just give the guy money, and you put it out under your name?" Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it was it was um, on the cover of Nintendo Power. It was yes. actually volume number sixty five. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, I, I remember this issue because the, the cool thing about Illusion of Gaia is that it used real life locations like the pyramids in Egypt, yeah. like the Incan ruins. So in a way, you were uh, learning little history lessons Yeah, in a like in, they were realistic settings in a fictitious story. I'm still going to stream Chrono Trigger. I'm not going to I'm not sure I'm going to get to do it today. Uh, I might have to wait till tomorrow, but I'm still streaming it. I'm going to be streaming that for probably the next month or two. Nice. Uh, Rampage says all of the magazines are on archive website, retromags.com. Ooh. Until Nintendo yes. comes for them, too. <laughs> gonna, gonna bookmark that. Nintendo doesn't understand the internet. Uh, <laughs> um, is It's mine next, right? Let's see. Uh, no, it's mine next. Okay. Uh, November 21st, 1997, Rare releases Diddy Kong Racing for the N64 in North America. I might be in the minority when I say this. <laughs> I prefer Diddy Kong Racing over Mario Kart 64. 
I don't think that's that bold of a statement. I don't think Mario Kart 64 was that great on the 64. It really wasn't. Like, I I played it, and it was still fun, but it, it didn't have... I, I still enjoy, even though, like, the controls are very outdated, Yeah. I still enjoy the Super Nintendo version. The GameCube version of Mario Kart was great. Double Dash? Yeah. I had so much fun playing that, but Diddy Kong Racing was a, a lot of fun for the N64, and also introduced... Uh, Banjo from Banjo Kazooie, as well as um, uh, Conquer, the Squirrel. Awesome. Uh, really no- fun game. November twenty third of nineteen ninety eight, The Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time is released for the Nintendo sixty four in North America. Still to this day, my favorite video game of all time. I still remember, like it was yesterday, playing this game for the first time. Beating the uh, Deku Tree dungeon Uh and then going out into Hyrule Field for the first time. And I was just like, I I was like uh, Neo from the Matrix. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And then Breath of the Wild came along and topped that. Uh Uh, No, still Ocarina of Time is still, it's my favorite video game of all time. I still love going back and playing it. Another game that I would love to see remastered, even though they kind of did it for the 3DS. But if they did it for the Switch, Mm -hmm. they should do it for the 35th anniversary. Yes, they should. (laughs) They should. But uh, to close this out for this month in video game history, we were talking about this franchise earlier, but on November 20th of 2000, almost 20 years ago, how crazy is it to say that, Rare releases Banjo-Tooie for the N64, which I feel like doesn't get enough credit because Banjo-Kazooie was so well-received and is beloved. But the sequel is good too. Mm-hmm. It's overall, I still enjoy the original. But Banjo Tooie had some cool new layers that they introduced. Like you could play as Banjo and Kazooie separately. They had their own objectives, their own move sets that um, you could use. So and and they added like you know different weapons and everything you could use too. So yeah, fun game. Um, and bef- that's it for this month in video game history. Before we go into the review tonight, Derek has shout outs. Absolutely. As always, we like to give a shout out to our awesome patrons over at patreon.com slash nerdcaveretro. We want to shout out Armes Jackson, Xblade 07, Daniel Salmon, John Jekyll, a.k.a. The Mixmaster, Carlos Longoria, Staff Sergeant Sketch, Randy Bailey, and Tyler Watson. Thank you guys so much for your con- con- continued contributions to the podcast. And because you have kept us at the $50 level, we will continue to do those really fun commentary tracks. We're going to be doing Mask of the Phantasm later this month. Uh, I'm sure we'll have some other fun ones planned uh, throughout the next uh, several months. But if you want to be a part of our awesome Patreon, you can head over to patreon.com slash retro. And tonight, going to be talking about... Wallachia Reign of Dracula is a fast-paced, non-stop action, retro-style platformer uh, inspired by great video game classics like Castlevania and Contra, full of shooting and deadly traps that will quench your thirst for blood. Um, It's an action shooter platform. Um, It is unparalleled difficulty that will satisfy fans of old school, unforgiving, and complex gameplay. I will agree with that because it is definitely a difficult, difficult game. <laughs> it is very, very hard. One of the, the cool things I thought about the game when I first fired it up was um, the, the, the kind of the first cutscene, and um, it was all hand-drawn, like pencil drawings, but it had voiceover to it, and it's very, very cool. I love the art style and kind of the, you know, the that look of like old drawings and stuff like that, that they use to tell the story. So awesome. It immediately brought you into the world. And, um, the thing is, is it takes place in the 1400s in Wallachia. Um, and it's kind of deceptive because at first I thought this was going to be a Castlevania clone, but it's 
not really because it actually based more on Vlad the Impaler um, than Dracula. Like it's actual based on the actual guy um, who was the base for Dracula. Like it, it's all about um, you're you're you know you're in the land of Wallachia and he comes along and he's killing people and putting them on spikes and stakes and you know you you're I think she he kills her brother if I'm not mistaken and when she was a kid so she um, her whole family gets killed by Dracula and um, she is taken in by a monk who trains her in fighting ability and she gets older and one of the princes of Wallachia sends an you know someone after Vlad Dracula to to take him out him and his armies out and you know he doesn't want a woman to do it but she's like hey I got the skills bro <laughs> and so she takes off after um Vlad Dracula and the whole game is you going through the land of Wallachia and I think 1492 somewhere around there and it's more based on realistic and not the uh kind of the you know what we think of the monsters myth. and you know th there's no like mummies to fight or um skeleton armies no it's all like actual human armies you're fighting and the one thing I really like so far about this game. I love the art style. The music's awesome. The music is you. I mean, you heard in the in the intro there. The music's pretty pulse pounding. Uh, the art style is very high quality pixel art, and I enjoy it. Um, I just me personally, I prefer a little more cartoonish look to everything. A little more stylized. And this is kind of more. You know, there's not really any kind of inhuman characters or, you know, kind of more human looking. Like it's not like, it's not what you expect when you go into this game it, it, the gameplay itself. It doesn't have that kind of that hand to hand, you know, whip combat like Castlevania or anything like that. You're, you're equipped with a, uh, um, a bow and arrow. So it feels more like a shooter than anything else and you are equipped with a sword but it's really only used for close combat or enemies that take a lot of damage because you do way more damage with the sword than the actual um, bow and arrow the further you get into the game but it, it's it, like I said it, it's a platformer but it feels more like a run and gun than more of a Contra style than it than it does Castlevania. I think that's interesting because as I was watching the gameplay of it, my initial thought was you can definitely tell Castlevania inspired the making of this game. Yeah. But what, what I like what you've been saying about the game is honestly more story based mm -hmm. than anything. The fact that it seems to have more of a realistic take on events rather than the myths yeah. that we've heard about. I, I think that adds a different dynamic and not something that, you know, has just been done over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Something else that stood out to me, because I haven't played the game, but I did watch some gameplay of it before we started the show. We've touched on this a couple of times, but I think the graphics, with this being like that 2, 2.5D two style, the graphics of this game are beautiful. Oh, yeah. Especially the backgrounds. Mm -hmm. You know, because we've mentioned like Donkey Kong Country, for example, how those backgrounds look so good and stylized, and almost you kind of get lost in the graphics and yeah. not focusing on the gameplay sometimes but well it's interesting you say that, that because the way that the like the backgrounds look and the way the character models are made this kind of reminded me more of you know like the super nintendo sega genesis era the super nintendo you kind of had a little more games you know even castlevania 4 still had kind of a cartoony almost bright look to it more colors and everything on the Genesis felt a little more mature. And that's what this felt like. This felt like more of a Sega Genesis game a title than a Super Nintendo title, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Yeah, no, I, I definitely see that too. But yeah, you're right. That The actual, like the backgrounds of the game are beautiful. The character models are great. The, the way your character moves um the the controls are very tight like there's no 
you don't feel like you're slipping or anything when you're jumping from platform to platform. It's very, very tight, the controls on it. So if you like, if you like Castlevania, but this is more, like I said, it's more of a realistic take on the actual person that Vlad the Impaler was. Um, but you like games like Contra or um, it even set up at the very top uh, here, um, Rolling Thunder. That's another good uh, comparison to make for this game. And Shinobi, those type of games. Like, if you like those kind of run-and-gun type games, this is absolutely up your alley. And it's got three different difficulty settings. It's got easy, normal, and hard. I've been playing on normal, and it's been whipping my butt. <laughs> and the cool thing is, once you clear a level, you can always go back, you know, to the... If you quit the game, you come... You know, it saves your progress, Um and, but the only thing that sucks is each level has like, you know, three different, um, you know, levels within the level. Um, so if you get all the way to the end of the level and you're on your last life, you get infinite continues. You, if you say you die on the boss, you would have to start all the way back over if you're on your last life. But if you still have a life left over, you just start back at the beginning of that little sub level that the, you know, the boss is on. But if you get to the end and you lose all your lives, you have to go all the way back to the beginning of the level. And that, uh, that sucks. <laughs> I hate when that happens. I wish you could just go back to that level that the boss was on. That's the frustrating fact about really other games of that genre and from, you know, the 80s and 90s. Yeah. No, I feel you there. But I, I really enjoy the game. It's very hard. So if you're looking for a challenge... And it's only, I think right now it's on sale. I think it's 20% off. I got it 20% off. It's like eleven ninety nine or ten ninety nine. Uh, I think it's normally like fourteen ninety nine. So it's not that expensive, even if you buy it when it's not on sale. Uh, it is available pretty much everywhere. You can get it on um, uh, Steam, um, the Switch. Uh, I think you can get it on PS4. I'm pretty sure. I'm um, not sure about Microsoft, but if, if it is, I would say check... Um, what, what is their Game Pass? I would check Game Pass uh, to see if it's on there. But I haven't finished the game, um, and it's pretty hard. And I was tempted to, to bust it down to easy, but I'm like, nope, I'm not going to do that. I'm just, I'm just going to grind away on normal. So um, I'm going to go ahead and give it a solid just seven. Like It's not what I was expecting, but it's still a good game. And um, so if you like that, sort of Sega Genesis aesthetic, like that that kind of that way more pulse-pounding, hard, like hard rock type music um, that the Sega Genesis would offer over the Super Nintendo and kind of the darker, more realistic, more mature gameplay and graphics, like that style. If you love that Sega Genesis style, that's that this game is dripping with it. So if that's, a, if that's your thing... I say go ahead and, and spend the spend the twelve to fourteen dollars to get it, and I recommend it. Yeah, the the music stood out to me too. I loved it; it was really good. So yeah, I mean, I know it's kind of a short review, but that's uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. It's it's kind of your basic run and gun, um, you know, retro style game uh, platformer, and that's what we're here for. And I enjoy it so. If you like those type of games, definitely go check it out. Absolutely. And I, um, now that we are at the end of the review, um, I'm going, I have a, a giveaway here. I have, um, let me look up the, uh, the name of the company. It was, pull up my messages here. It was Pixel, Pixel Heart from Pixel Heart. EU. Um, so if you want to follow them, they're the game publisher for uh, Wallachia. It's at pixelheart underscore EU. Um, they sent me a download code for Steam. And uh, whoever gets this question right first in the chat room is going to get this code. So here we go. Who is, and this is probably pretty easy, so whoever gets it first. Who uh, is the last boss before you get to Dracula? 
and the original Castlevania. So who was the second to last boss before you get to Dracula? So whoever gets that first, you are going to get Wallachia on Steam. Ah, dumb I... How did he pronounce it? <laughs> it's Tyler. <laughs> so Dymo got it first. Um, I am going to... Uh, let's go here. Come on, Twitch. Let me... Ah, oh, Mixmaster, I'm sorry. He said there was a delay. Uh, I'll, I'll get you back somehow, my friend. <laughs> um, I'm going to... Just hang on, Tyler. I'm trying to get Twitch to, to pop up for me right here, right now. I'll, I'll DM you the uh, the code. But thank you for playing. And he is the big winner today. The big wiener. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else before we get out of here today? No, just uh, a little programming note for uh, next week's episode of the Derek Diamond Experience. Jason and Wally will be joining me for the long-anticipated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles roundtable, specifically the 1990 movie. Crazy to think that movie's 30 years old. We're actually recording it uh, right after we finish the show. So that'll be out uh, next week. I'll be taking the week of Thanksgiving off for that. Uh, but if you want to follow the show, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at D-Diamond Podcast. Yes. Um, I think I might put out an older episode i'm trying to find the episode that we did our very first episode with for pop culture palette and put that out as the episode uh, an interim episode next week so people can see what we sounded like when we were young and fresh <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and apologize <laughs> um but yeah um if you would like to um joining me here on thursday nights right here on twitch for the open micers podcast we just had a really cool guest the other night um, for this week's episode, his name's Soho Johnny, and he's from New York. He puts together a lot of um, different things, um, you know, uh, concerts and things for um, charity and stuff like that. So go check that episode out at Open Micers on Twitter. Um, that's just about it. Join me here whenever I'm playing. Um, go ahead and subscribe to me. And whenever I, uh, I start playing some more Chrono Trigger, you can come join me. And that's about it. So I think we're going to go ahead and call it a day. What do you say? Let's do it. All righty. Let's play some music here. If you would like to email us, you can email us at nerdcaveretro at gmail.com. We are at nerdcaveretro.com on Twitter and Instagram and individually at jfunktastic and at Derek underscore diamond. We are at nerdcaveretro.com. We're also at Facebook, facebook.com slash nerdcaveretro. And we're on Patreon at patreon.com slash nerdcaveretro, where you can throw us a couple of bucks a month to help keep the lights on. And if you keep us above that $50 level, we will do those extra episodes, commentary episodes, every single month. And if you can't do that, can't throw us a couple bucks a month, leave us a review wherever po fine podcasts are given away for free. So Derek, please tell them what it's all about. This is the way. Yes. Awesome. Fun show. So, Dymo, let me... Hold on. I got that code for you right here, buddy. I'm fixing to whisper it to you right now. Whisper. There we go. All right. It is in your whispers, my good friend. Thank you for hanging out Sweet, today, nice. everybody. Yeah, good turnout for a Sunday morning show. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm going to go grab a refreshment. And um, everybody, if you want to watch us do the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles roundtable, uh, go check us out. Is it going to be on Facebook? Uh, it's not going to be live. It'll uh, be pre-recorded because okay. I'm going to I'm going to release it next okay. week while I'm out of town. Well, never mind then. <laughs> well, real quick, if you want to leave comments um, and you follow me on Facebook, go to my Facebook page, leave them there, awesome. and I'll on the show. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. We will see you guys later.